Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Two weeks. Oh gosh. My life alert bracelet is gone. <laughs> you guys want to go over to the damage? So I don't want to like complain and make it sound like it's 7,000 acres of flat. No. Damage. But it, yes, there's pockets. Yeah. So there's, nothing, there's like a bunch of cold outbursts. So the wind exceeded 100 miles per hour and it would have downburst. And when that would downburst, it would just push everything. And last but not least, once your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back and callous pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old man said you read what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. It's hard out here. I'm always bringing the heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. Call me Plowboy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a That answers that question. <laughs> There's the lid. Right here is from the windstorm on, I think it was July 29th. And it took down one of our 70,000 bushel grain bins. You can see just made it fly like a kite. So it took it right down, folded it, did hit three other bins here. Hopefully we can try to piece that one back together. The unload's completely gone on that one. We still got a while to go, but we're only about a month away from using these grain bins. But uh, I think Sims Construction out of London, Ohio. Uh, hopefully uh, they're going to be here soon and uh, it sounds promising. I think we uh, should be able to hopefully get uh, a new bin up here soon. So we're not down and out for harvest yet. You know, we didn't plan on this happening. <laughs> we wasn't planning on a new grain bin this year. One of those things that happen. So when they get here, they get here. I know they're going to do, do the best that they can. This is what we've been finding. There's pockets of this everywhere. Okay, so see that's completely snapped. That's called green snap. There's just nothing there. It's completely gone. Looks like it's been harvested. Like, there's another one, completely gone. This guy here, see how he's bent? If you can get the weight off of him, they will try to stand back up. So it's green snap or blue over. A lot of outbursts like this, you know, it's not a complete loss by any means. I'm not, you know, but it's it's gonna it's definitely a loss and it's not gonna be fun for harvest. So you don't want the ears to touch the ground because once they make contact with the dirt, they'll try to sprout. Or if they hold moisture in, so we gotta be really, really careful. You can tell this is really good corn too. So it stinks we wasted it. But part of it. Pour some corn syrup out for my homies. Uh, this is a 44 acre corn after corn after corn. It's third year corn here in my house. It's really looked apart all year long. Uh, biggest problem is, is we just had a massive windstorm and hail. A lot of corn is down throughout this field. Sweet corn. 18 by 46 viable kernels. 
Yeah, good depth there. See a small cob. I'm a fan of a smaller cob because a big cob will always just give you false hope, I feel like, because you just feel it and it's like, oh man, you got a lot of girth in your hand. You know, they're gonna have good kernels and then you open it up and it's all cob. It's not kernel depth or length. So, you know, they still got a long way to go too. I mean, you can just see the brace roots are completely covered in mud. So you can see, you know, the amount of rain that we have received, everything's just kind of covered in mud. Uh, that's why you're starting to see some of these bottom leaves, they're starting to die. We can't hold on to leaves a lot longer. Uh, we try to feed the plant, keep it healthy, but I'm happy. Across the board, I think this is gonna be our best crop that we've ever had. Everybody else is gonna have really good crops this year. They're gonna be at the top of their game. That's why they're on this show. I'm gonna worry about me. I'm gonna worry about taking care and beating my own records. And if, at the end of the day, if I can do that, then I will be satisfied. Here at Advanced Yield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. There's no middleman for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. We're out here today and we're checking some of the pivot bio trials we have. Pretty exciting to see what's going on in the field, you know, because we go to all this work and time to put these trials out, make sure they're correct, and we've got a nitrogen reducing study out there. Jim and Chris are here from Pivot Bio. We are in um, proven 40, no reduction. We gotta move over to get the reductions. You grab them, I'll cut them. I'm just gonna do them right above the brace roots. Okay. Okay. We'll take those out. It's like carrying a freaking big old fat baby out, isn't it? So we needed an untreated check. So that doesn't have any proven 40 or the proven 40 with the reduction. 60.2. That's one down. Five to go. Yep. Those three over here were done. Okay. So it'd be these two or not. Yep. Those three are done. You do, you can weigh those. All right. 62.7, 62 64.9, 67, 64.1. Anything over like, like upper 40s is really yeah. good. Forty-one eighty. That's the that's the standard practice. It's still up there, ain't it? Sixty-six, sixty-seven. Okay, same same variety as all the way to here. So this yellow strip, which you can you can actually see it on this one too, that's the change in fungicide. Okay, so the red is the that's totally enough, different variety. Totally different variety. The yellow and the green is the exact same variety, only difference is different fungicide. Yeah, if you can see it from the satellite, something's going on. Yeah. yeah. So we just wanted to show the same amount on the, both the untreated check or the yeah. standard practices and uh, where uh, we have our proven 40 in there you can take 35 pounds out and replace it with a microbe. So 
The fact that we're on average showing even better than that is a win. I mean, it's a, it's a double win. And it's, it's cool to watch happen. What we've been finding, which is awesome, is that the plant biomass has been about seven to 10% higher on average across all 300 fields that we have. The amount of nitrogen in that uh, field is about five, five and a half, six percent higher. Uh, so we're beating parity. We'd like to just, we wanted to just be even. And we're finding that we're about five to six percent higher. We're looking forward to, to when we get to do some yield checks here this fall. But yeah. the preliminary data looks really good. In the end, we're a nitrogen company, and we want to make sure that our microbe is providing the nitrogen to the plant that we say it is. Is it providing at least the 40 pounds yeah. that we're saying? All of our data so far says it's doing at least that, if not a little bit. Well, I think your satellite, the satellite imagery would say it's supplying mm -hmm. at least that much, if not right. a little more. Yeah. So it gives you the confidence going into next season. They got some pretty uh, cool equipment, the chlorophyll meter, right? And uh, we uh, checked stock diameter. Uh, we weighed all the stocks. We, there were six stocks in each sample. And there, there were some differences, uh, some differences that shows the proven's doing uh, what we wanted it to do. So pretty exciting to see what the combine says. I mean, that's the, that's the end tail, right? It looks like stuff's working, so stay tuned. Today I'm running Monty's dry carbon. We're doing a lot more soil health stuff. The soil biology is the key to everything. The best human product on the market is Monty's Humic. Doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. So the 2021 crop is, uh, harvest is coming soon. We just, uh, not too long ago, got everything put in a shed from planting, everything cleaned up. Ran the Copperhead Furrow Cruiser this year. This is actually our second year with it, and we actually run it on our bean planter. The biggest thing I was worried about was the wear, and this is two seasons ran on this, and you, you can see there's Virtual nowhere at all. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing we all struggle with, you know, closing up and getting the air pockets out. There's not a lot of adjust, extra adjustment to it. Easy installation, just, just a simple addition to the planner for what I feel like is a better closing. So many, we got so many different soil types. It, it works in all of them well. Just going from one to the other, there's no different settings. It's just, um, I, I usually leave the same pressure on all of them. Maybe some of my finer sand, I'll take some pressure off. You know, all that's got to do with uh, that even emergence. And I've been real happy with the copperheads and we'll be running our concaves this fall and um, looking forward to that as well. Said we're 26 of August on this one. We're we're week and a half away, two weeks at the most from harvest. Yeah, we're getting close on this, and, and I, I like to feel the weight. I think I think we're looking good there on the weight, but um, especially with this heat, it's driving it on pretty quick. So I mean, it's burning most of the bottom leaves off. We still got you know the ear leaf on most of them, but I think we got an opportunity for some decent yield here. I mean, I, I think these last two weeks. They, this hot weather is, is definitely taking some bushels back from what I thought we had, but um, we'll see. Only one way to find out is with the combine out here. I mean, we're almost done here. This field here was, um, last year's crop was watermelons. And you know, watermelons we always follow with a, with a wheat, you know, even a winter oats cover crop. This year we used wheat and we got some good early growth on the wheat and then I came last November with the soil warrior and strip tilled this. I'm, I'm not one to be cocky about my corn and I'd rather under promise and overproduce and 
than be the other way around. So, you know, every year we try new stuff. I mean, I, that's why we feel like we've got to where we are, is just by trying different things and learning new stuff. And, you know, this year I met, actually met Bodie Kitchell with BW Fusion through um, Twitter and got talking to him. And um, this year we're very fortunate to try some of their products. You know, we like what we've seen. We've seen some pretty cool stuff in tissue tests. Interesting to see where we get on yield because we've got treated and untreated. So looking forward to that. You know, a lot of this high yielding stuff we've been learning, it's a lot of it's got to do with biology and what the BW Fusion guys are doing up there. It's pretty interesting. You know, there's different biology for different nutrients and, and to get that right balance, it's just interesting to add that to your soils and, and see if we can make a difference there. And like I said, we've seen some, some decent jumps in our tissue test. Be interesting to see how that corresponds with the end, end yield. So this winter, I actually uh, was invited up to the BW Fusion um, lab. It it's, was amazing, really, on what they do uh, to create these um, microbes and, and this biology. Appreciate all, all their help for sure. Thanks guys for coming out and spending some time with us today. We sweated our ass off in the cornfield. Today we looked at uh, one of our contest fields. Um, these stuff's looking pretty good. Uh, we're not finishing well, I'm afraid of, with this heat. You know, we got two more weeks left. But I don't know if I've got anything for Cal, but I'm uh, not giving up to the end. From here on out, it's just keeping it wet, trying to keep it alive as long as possible. But uh, if we could just at least beat our personal best, that'll be a win for me. Ray roll. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Today I'm running Monty's Dry Carbon. We're doing a lot more soil health stuff. The soil biology is the key to everything. The best humic product on the market is Monty's Humic. Right next to this waterway on both sides, there was a fair amount of work done because we were tiling and so we, we we're gonna need to walk in a little ways. All right. Ow. You guys still all right? We, we had to fix a tile right here, so this is a mm. disaster right here. Yeah. Mm. This is what I'm seeing a lot of. Yeah. A lot of. Yeah. You, you know, you got inch. six, six or eight rows yeah, you there. You got that inch for yeah. so long your tip back on it and stuff. I mean, disease wise, though, I mean, nothing visually. Okay. It's always fun. One, two, three, four, five, six. Overall, I think it's gonna be, you know, good corn. Oh, yeah. Like this one's actually pollinated a little bit better than this one. Mm -hmm. I really wanna look at this variety difference down here a little bit. So let's uh, 
let's let's move. We can get you guys inside. We just pack in here somehow. We're using Concept Agritech. So we're trying this Residue RX. We put strips in. We're gonna watch that. So that's one of the things we're doing. Bunch of bugs, 2.0. I think that's a, is that a new product that this year, product. Tyler? Yep. Yep. It seemed like we were getting pretty good biological activity uh, earlier. You know, I kind of always look for mushrooms and those kind of things. And then uh, Calbor, a uh, new product for us also. We're kind of excited to see how they work out. Oh, we're just gonna burrow out through here. We gotta get past the end rows. If you remember the amount of residue out here earlier, it was so much that you couldn't hardly. Right. You know, we are getting that. We're getting that break Pretty down. well yeah. gone, you know. And that's what we want to see. So, you know, a lot of guys dig ruts, but this is basically the center of the row right here. Well, what you're gonna see, all these little all these little root hairs, you see those? I don't know if you can zero in right there. What? That's what I want to see. And I guarantee if you dug one of these, you, you know, you'll get, we did one of those on one of the other farms where we uh, dug it up and shown the amount of hmm. fine root hairs. And I just really like, that's what I want to see. We had like a bacteria from our irrigation water. Okay. We killed a bunch of plants. It was like a bacteria wilt. And it got in it when it was probably like V5, V6. And, and, we, norm girl. and we normally don't irrigate them. Mm -hmm. um, but it, 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 I actually came out here one day and it stunk like rotten stuff. And I started looking around. Uh -huh. And we'll probably find a few remnants of it out here. But right. um, they, they just died. I mean, from the top down. It was even in my sweet corn yep. from that irrigation. And I didn't know what it was, but we started investigating that. Right. That's what it is. Hmm. I guess they see it in some other spots. This is smut. Uh, that, that's actually, that ear is already gone and smut grew in case of it. Something going on there right. too. But uh, upper canopy, I mean, what's really doing the work now is, you know, here on up. Right, those are your main solar yeah. panels. That's a nice broad leaf mm -hmm. there. So two weeks ago, mm -hmm. you know, these would be brown and those would still be the normal color, the yellow color. Mm -hmm. And then you can start telling you're not pollinating all the way to the end, which right. I struggle with that. Um, it seems like fairly often with uh, even in the higher yield corn, because I think it gets so dense in here that we don't get quite as much sunlight down in as I'd like to see. Uh -huh. And it's, you know, populations are up a little bit, so. If a guy could, you know, narrow up his rows, you know, to yeah. make the difference. Well, the more upright the varieties and those right. kind of things. Right, you know, They all have to come into play. All right, let's get out of here. Next week on Corn Wars. There is some corn that's leaning a little bit, hops broke. It's a big sale basically, right? That big boy zoomed through this corn. I'm used to it. <laughs>